Hi everyone, and welcome to Mouse and Math. Today, we will be discussing grasping functions of four variables and four-dimensional Gaussian integrals. General grasping function of four independent variables, psi one bar, psi one, psi two bar, and psi two, can be expanded in the Taylor expansion of terms such as constant, terms with only psi bar, terms with only psi, terms with the psi bar, two psi bars, terms with the psi bar and a psi, terms with two psi's, terms with two psi bars and a psi, terms with one psi bar and two psi's, and finally, most importantly, terms with all four variables, we're going to choose the order as psi one bar, psi one, psi two bar, psi two, and to note this special notation, psi bar psi in brackets with the corresponding integration element, d psi one bar, d psi one, d psi two bar, d psi two, to be d psi bar d psi in brackets. Now, all of these terms have a characteristic order chosen for them. In particular, if we look at the term psi one bar, psi two, for example, element of this sequence, it's just minus psi two psi one bar. So it does not get its own term. So let's think about how many terms we're really talking about here. Well, there are two psi bars. This is two terms, two terms. This only has one term. Uh, this has four terms, actually, since you have uh, these and the corresponding other one. And there are two ways to do this, two ways to do this, one way to do this. So that's why it's important. We know from previous experience that only the last term in the Taylor expansion will matter when we integrate the function. Let's go ahead and just write down what we know. Know that integral of the function with respect to our integration measure, d psi bar d psi, is going to be some constant, which is typically called d, this is known as a d term in the expansion, uh, times the integral of the last term with respect to the measure, integral of psi bar psi, d psi bar d psi. I will show in a moment that this is equal to plus one, so the whole thing is simply equal to d, last term of the Taylor expansion. So we know this because we learned in the last video that we must saturate the integration measure, which contains four variables. This term only has no variables, one variable, two, three, only the most important one, four variables, so that saturates the integration measure. I will now demonstrate the important lemma that I just used. Basically, this is the only integral that you will need when evaluating grasping functions of four variables, since all other terms will be zero. All right, let's go ahead and evaluate the integral of psi bar psi d psi bar d psi using what we defined earlier. This is just psi one bar, psi one, psi two bar, psi two, d psi one bar, d psi one, d psi two bar, d psi two. A lot of writing with these grasping variables. All right, so we're going to just exchange these two at no cost. As we learned last time, that products of Grassmann variables commute with other Grassmann variables. It's just going to be integral psi one bar psi one, d psi one bar, d psi one. Second integral sign for clarity. Same thing with one replaced with two. Psi two bar, psi two, d psi two bar, d psi two. And we also learned last time that each of these we're just equal to minus one individually. So the result is simply minus one squared or plus one. All the integral you need in four dimensions. Great, we are now ready to tackle the problem that we came here to solve, which is the four dimensional Grassmann Gaussian.
Okay. Our main result of the lecture, we will be showing that the integral of e to the minus psi bar m psi with respect to our integration measure d psi bar d psi is equal to the determinant of the matrix. Let's go ahead and compare this to what we know for real variables. I'm not going to derive this result here, but it's just a generalization of the one-dimensional Gaussian. We have n x's integrate over all space with the matrix a here is n by n from equal to the square root of pi to the n over the determinant of the matrix. This expression here, we have a similar construction. So no square roots, no pi's, just the matrix. So let's go ahead and see how we're going to do this. First of all, let's define what we're talking about. We're going to define psi bar by the row vector, psi 1, psi 2. And psi will be the column vector, psi 1, psi 2. And we will have m as a 2 by 2 matrix. Which we write in the typical form, a, b, c, d, just for familiarity. Fortunately, I can't leave this up, because I don't have enough space. But just bear with me, we'll get there. All right, so first we want to evaluate the parameter that we're going to expand in. We're going to be expanding in sidebar m psi. Let's just evaluate this and see if it's zero. We'll go from there. All right, sidebar m psi equal to psi one bar psi one, a, b, c, d, psi one, psi two. I'm multiplying these two matrices together. Psi 1 bar, Psi 2 bar. Sorry, I made a slight mistake here. These both needs to, need to have bars. This is, this is the matrix with the bars. I do apologize for that. Multiplying these together. A Psi 1 plus B Psi 2. C Psi 1 plus D Psi 2. Now I multiply these two matrices together. This will simply be equal to a psi 1 bar psi 1 plus b psi 1 bar psi 2 plus c psi 2 bar psi 1 plus d psi 2 bar psi 2. Sorry, too many d's there. Psi 2 bar psi 2. All right, this is obviously not zero yet because we have um, just two variables here. So let's go ahead and see if we can look at the next term, see if that one is zero. We will now consider psi bar m psi squared, and the best way to integrate a square of something in terms of Grassmann variables is to just write it twice, because you can't use familiar formulas like x plus y squared is equal to x squared plus y squared plus 2xy, because this assumes that x and y commute. They don't commute in this case, we can't use formulas like this or its generalizations. <coughs> Excuse me. So we'll just go ahead and write this twice, see what we get. Sorry, MSI, make sure it's correct. Yep, should be good. This is A, psi 1 bar psi 1 plus B, psi 1 bar psi 2 plus C, psi 2 bar psi 1, plus D, psi 2 bar psi 2. We're going to multiply these together. Now we're not going to write out every term. That would be a mess. Instead, we can just think about this logically, rationally, see what would be 0 here. Well, if we just multiply the two A terms together, there will be two psi 1 bars and two psi 1s. It's bad. Both 0. A times with B, well, they would have two psi 1 bars. A with C, they'd have two psi 1s. Last main term is A with D, which is non-zero. Excellent. The order of this is psi 1 bar psi 1, psi 2 bar psi 1, 2, sorry, which is indeed what we want. And by symmetry, the D A term has to be zero as well. The D A term has D A term has to be non-zero. That's psi 2 bar, psi 2, psi 1 bar, psi 1. Good. 
And let's go ahead, look at the next term, B. Okay, if we want B with A, I'll be bad because there are two side one bars. B with B, to everything, no good. BC is fine though. BC, side one bar, side two, side two bar, side one. By symmetry, the CB term has to be good as well. Plus side two bar, side one, side one bar, side two. Okay. Now let's go ahead and put this in the order that we want in the integration measure. Sorry about the order of this, but we just have to write it out. These are long expressions. All right. I'm going to take this and go up here. This term is already good to go. This term just needs me to interchange these two over here at no cost. Okay, these are slightly trickier. So, what can we do here? Put that one, yep. Yeah. So we move this one over twice, cross of a plus sign. And then we interchange the ones in the middle, cross of a minus sign, that's overall minus. And, we're going to uh, move these over here and then flip the ones in the middle. Should be good. Cost of a minus sign is this term, overall plus sign, this term, overall minus sign, and we get a factor of two because they're the same. Two A B minus B C times what we want. Side one bar side one, side two bar side two, which we recognize from high school algebra even as, sorry, slightly dyslexic with the B's and the D's. Two times the determinant of the matrix times the order of the size that we agreed upon earlier. Okay, this is going to be an important term for us. It's non-zero, it has all four variables, so we know that's probably going to be good. This will most likely be the last term in the expansion for our previous experience with graphs and variables. But just to explicitly calculate it, let's go ahead and show definitively that the cubic term is zero. So if I took psi m psi cubed and wrote it out three times, psi one bar psi one plus a bunch of other terms, and we've got term here plus b, psi 1 bar, psi 2, for example, plus some other terms. Then you got some other terms here, plus c, psi 2 bar, psi 1, for example, plus one last term. If I took this, multiplied by itself, I would indeed get terms that have six sides in it. But there are only four sides to choose from. So two of these sides have to be the same. This will be something like psi bar psi, psi bar psi, psi bar psi, and at least two of these have to be the same. So without loss of um, generality, just choose these two to be the same. It would be some psi bar squared psi squared times the order that we had before. Both of these will be zero. So the cubic term is indeed zero. We would have guessed that by knowing that there are only four variables and the fourth order term should be zero, but it's just nice to write it out explicitly, make sure we're not fooling ourselves. Now we are ready for our main result. Okay, so the left-hand side of the expression which to evaluate is the integral of 1 minus psi bar m psi plus 1 half, don't break the 1 half because of the Taylor expansion of the exponential, psi bar m psi squared. And this is it, the last term in the expansion. Note, however, that typically when we do Taylor expansions, we stop after a certain point because the expansion parameter is small in some sense. In, in this case, it's not true. It really is zero after this point. You can think of this as 
graphs and variables squared to zero, so they must be small in the sense that infinitesimals are small, but it's not small in the sense of just saying that all higher order terms are negligible. They really are zero from this point on. From our previous experience, we know that this term is zero because there are four sides here, no sides here to soak them up, bad. This term is zero because there are two sides here. Remember, each term looks like this, something like that, for example. This is like just side one. So th these two sides are not enough to soak up the four sides in there. So it's zero. This term is good because it has all four sides in the order that we chose earlier. Let's go ahead and write out what that might be. One half, we showed that earlier that this was two times the determinant of the matrix times the integral of the functions in the order that we want with respect to our integration measure. And indeed, we showed earlier that this was plus one. So the entire result is, as we want it to be, just the determinant of the matrix M. Of course, this will hold in multi-dimensions. This holds in any dimension M. We just did two, um, two by two matrices requiring four graphs and variables, just for clarity. I, a similar proof extends to N dimensions, but it's harder to see what's really going on. Well, if you enjoyed this video and learned more about grasping integrals, please subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time, okay?